Good morning, I'm the Reverend Stephen Page for St. Patrick's Anglican Church. Yesterday I talked about baseball hitters who lose their grip, who lose control of their bats as the wood flies off into the crowd. And I also mentioned that there's a substance that helps batters keep a grip of the bat called pine tar. Today, let's talk about one of the most famous moments in the long history of ball players using pine tar. It was July 24th, 1983. The Kansas City Royals were in New York to play the Yankees. And after eight innings, the Yankees led the game 4-3. to three. But in the top of the ninth, the Royals got something going. UL Washington, uh, a switch-hitting infielder for the Royals, he got on base. And then, with two outs and Washington still stuck on first base, Royals third baseman George Brett stepped to the plate. Now, Brett was quite a player. He could hit for average. He could hit for power. He had such a long and great career that he is now in the Baseball Hall of Fame. But on this day, he needed something. He needed a base hit, anything, to keep the Royals' chances alive. They were down to their final out of the game. Making Brett's life more difficult was the Yankees' pitcher, Goose Gossage, one of the greatest ninth-inning specialists in baseball history, a future Hall of Famer himself. Well, on this day, Brett got the better of the battle. He hit the ball over the fence for a two-run homer. Two runs scored, putting the Royals ahead 5-4, to four, with a good chance to win the game. But then Billy Martin, the Yankees' manager, he asked the umpires to measure George Brett's bat. There's a rule, it's little known before that day anyway, that says that a bat cannot have pine tar more than 18 inches up the handle. And when the umps measured, sure enough, Brett's bat had a little more than 18 inches of pine tar on it. That made the bat an illegal piece of equipment, so the hit was therefore illegal. And that meant the home run was wiped out, Brett was out number three, the game was over. The ump walked over to the Royals' dugout, he pointed at George Brett, and he signaled, Out! The Yankees won! Well, a livid George Brett, he exploded out of the dugout, eyes bulging, spit flying, and he gave the ump an earful. And he had to be physically restrained by his teammates. One clever commentator described the incident as the first time in history that someone had hit a game-losing home run. Well, despite long and loud protests, the ump's call stood firm. Game over. Of course, the story doesn't end there. You'll have to read the details for yourself about all the protests and the counter-protests to reverse or uphold the ruling. But that July day in 1983, all the excitement was caused by a legalistic, to-the-letter application of the rules. When it comes to spiritual things, sometimes followers of God can be a little overzealous in legalistically applying rules. We have instructions, we have advice, and yes, we have laws from God about how to live with others and with God. And we sometimes mistakenly think that following the rules is the whole point. It's not a new thing. Jesus picked on the religious leaders of his day who stressed the rules too much, for example, in Matthew 23. I think of times that people who rarely darken the door of a church ask me, do I have to go to church to be a Christian? Or, or some variation of that question. And I never answer yes or no, because by asking such a question, they've shown me that they completely misunderstand what God is all about. God did not write the Bible as a rule book. Sure, it has some rules, it has some advice, it has some sometimes very strong advice. But they are there because of God's love for us. The Bible is more a love letter from God than a book of do's and don'ts. God wants you to be involved in a local church because God is making a people. That's the main point of what God is up to. And God wants you to be a part of that people called the church. Don't get stuck whether looking at ourselves or others. Don't get stuck on checklists of do's and don'ts. God is more concerned that you learn how to love God and love your neighbor alongside your brothers and sisters in Christ, other Christians. Read with them. Pray with them. Sing with them. Live and love and work and worship with them. And when that is happening, you'll find you become less concerned about having a half inch too much pine tar on your bat, for example. For St. Patrick's Church. 
I'm Stephen Page.